Hi everybody, it's Logan from Hidden Villa, and I'm here to talk to you today about flying. When I was your age, one of my favorite things to do, never in school of course, was to make paper airplanes. And I have my favorite paper airplane design right here. And I'm pretty sure that this paper airplane is going to fly a lot better than this piece of paper because of some changes or adaptations I made when I folded it. So here's how this piece of paper flies. And now for the airplane. Pretty good. So right here, looking at my paper airplane design, I made a few changes that help it fly. I made some adaptations, you could say. One is I added a nice fold wings, and I also made these folds in the back, which help keep it level. I added a paper clip to the front, which means that I can go further for longer, and I made sure that all my creases were really sharp so it stayed together. So that's talking about paper airplanes, but there are things more serious in the world, and I would say more fun than paper airplanes in the world that do fly. My favorite are, are birds, and birds have internal and external body parts that help them fly, and I want to tell you about them right now and so we can understand a little bit better how amazing it is that birds fly and the adaptations in their bodies that help them. There's three of the adaptations that I want to talk about. One is the fact that they have feathers. Two is the fact that their bodies are really lightweight. And three, the fact that they lay eggs. Believe it or not, laying eggs helps birds fly. So the first one I want to talk about was feathers. So this hawk feather right here is one of the most important feathers to keep a hawk flying. It's at the front of its wing, so the wind would be coming this way, and the bird would be moving this way. You can see it's called what's, what's called asymmetrical. This side of the feather is different than this side of the feather, and that's an adaptation that helps this feather in particular catch as much air as possible. Also, it's really lightweight, and that also keeps the bird's weight down. And one more adaptation is that this feather fell out of this hawk because they grow new feathers each year, and some birds twice a year, so that they can keep flying because you have to really take care of your feathers. And birds spend a lot of their day taking care of their feathers and making sure that they are all in good shape so that they can fly. Here is a whole wing that I have of a barn owl. And uh, this just, you can see all the feathers together. They, they make this wing which can just catch the air really well. And you can just imagine this owl soaring through the night looking for mice and other goodies to eat. So this red-tailed hawk right here is a really good example of how birds have adaptations that help them fly. It has feathers, which we already talked about, but also it has a lightweight body full of hollow bones, not solid bones like what we have, but hollow bones that keep it lightweight. This red-tailed hawk is almost full size and its wingspan is probably as long as my arm. But somehow, Despite that it's this big of a bird, it only weighs two pounds. That's about as much as your math book. And so being so lightweight allows this red-tailed hawk to fly really high and look for gophers or snakes or rabbits and uh, help it make sure that it stays alive. It's a lot easier to fly if you're lightweight. If you were really heavy, it'd be really hard to fly. And heavy birds like ostriches can't fly at all. My friend right here is a spotted towhee. She's a kind of uh, bird that lives a lot of times on the ground, but it can fly. And this is a, is a taxidermy bird. It's not alive, but it is real. So this spotted towhee has several adaptations that we can see that help it fly. One, you can see that it's got feathers, especially on its wings. And inside of its body, it's got hollow bones. And another adaptation that it has to keep its weight down is that it has a beak. You might be wondering how a beak helps uh, a towhee or other birds be lightweight. Well, think about us are met with mammals and we have teeth and those teeth get pretty heavy. We have a lot of them and birds don't have teeth at all. And so they have beaks, which are made out of the same stuff as bone, but then they also are covered with like um, stuff that's made out of our fingernails. And that keeps them lightweight so that they can fly. So this spotted toe beak helps it keep it light so that it can fly. But that also... One thing that this tohi does is when in the spring, when it's time to uh, make more tohis to reproduce, they lay eggs. You might be wondering why laying eggs is an adaptation that helps birds fly. Well, if you think about an animal like 
uh, a mammal that we have babies and, and the babies grow bigger and bigger in the mother in the body of the mother. If uh, if you're a bird and you had like six baby birds in your body growing bigger and bigger, that would keep you from flying. And so birds are able to put their babies in eggs, lay their eggs, keep those eggs in one place, and then the mother birds are free to fly around and get food for the babies, and they aren't weighed down. And um, that's really helpful too. Laying eggs means that the birds can stay lightweight longer. So those are three adaptations that help birds fly. So before we go, I wanted to ask just one question of you all, which is, why do birds fly at all? What are these adaptations for? What are the reasons that birds fly? So some answers, birds fly to, to catch food, Birds fly so they can get away from animals that are trying to eat them. And uh, birds also fly so that they can move from place to place. That's called migrating. So in the summer, they can go where it's hot and where there's lots of food. And then in the winter, they can fly south where there's more food and warmer weather down in the tropics. So those are the reasons why birds fly. Also, because it looks really cool. So I'm Logan from Hidden Villa, and that's what's good in the woods.